How did Josh's story come to you? I was in New York and a friend said, oh, you should go down to Pseudo, it's a great internet television network. And uh, I'd never heard of such a thing and I went down there and started working there. And I remember meeting Josh then, but we were talking about it earlier, he doesn't remember meeting me. He remembers <laughs> calling me when I went back to Los Angeles to come document cultural history. He said, Andy, do you want to come document cultural history? I said, what do you have in mind? I knew, I, you know, I knew a bit about how how ahead of the curve this man was, but I, I didn't know what he he said. I, I can't really describe it to you. You'll just have to decide for yourself if you want to come. And it was a 30-day experiment. Uh, the bunker, quiet. We live in public. Josh's. 30-day uh, adventure underground. And let's talk about that, Josh. For, for people who, you know, I said you were one of the dot-com pioneers, give people the, the brief uh, background. Well, I made, the, I made my dough doing a company called Jupiter Communications, now called Jupiter Research, and it went public. And uh, one, day, one day I checked on my phone and I was negative $3 and woke up the next morning and, you know, $2 million, and then um, six months later, Eighty million bucks. Eighty million bucks. <laughs> that, that was that was. Those were fun days, weren't they? The, the, actually, the 90s? actually, I think I was a uh, a victim of uh, of uh, shock. <laughs> the, the, there was too much money too fast. On, on the, the day the money came in, it was not one of the happiest days of my life, as it turns out. So you took this money, and you know, you, as as uh, Andy said, you started up uh, sudo.com again, ahead of the curve, starting an online TV network and uh, and doing video online uh, when when people were still for the most part, on, on dial-up uh, services. Yeah, that was p one of the problems. <laughs> the dot-com bust wasn't a big help either, as you know. But just let me go back to one thing, Andy. You know, the reason Andy got the call was sort of, she was doing the music, but it's not so much music. She gravitated to a flashpoint in culture. She just, she has that sensibility to know to, to, to hone in on, on you know, what's happening and what, what the, you know, touch the pulse of what's going on. And as it turns out, I guess I got lucky. You know, Pseudo was really gathering up, it was hoovering up culture in Manhattan for many years. And so, you know, there was a crew in place. And when we did the, the, the quiet piece, the bunker, that was at the millennium. We captured the millennium of New York City, you know, when, when New York City was still New York City, before it Disneyfied and pre-9-11, you know, we hit, we hit the button. I, th I feel Josh is a visionary, and I and I didn't know what I was filming when I was filming it. He he knew, but he didn't articulate it in words per se. He made a physical metaphor of where our lives are going now, where we we can actually. The reason why this film actually is is understandable to people, I think I hope, is that we can feel the technology and the virtual world taking over in our lives. We all have that happening. We're either joining a social networking site or we're buying our Blackberries. We're online as m perhaps more than we're offline. And that's just going to increase. Josh saw that very early on. And so what he created down there with all these artists, I didn't, I, I didn't know exactly what he was pointing out. But he was saying, no matter what I do, people will come and they will want to be a part of this, and they will want the, 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 we have an inherent need for connection and recognition, for attention, for love. We need not to be alone, and so people came, and, and f for the camera, and for to be where it mattered, to have their lives matter, and that's what happened. I mean, we filmed with 110 surveillance cameras, the nitty gritty, every detail of everybody's lives, and they signed away their image, just as you sign away your photos when you post them on Facebook. You know, and it, it was amazing, but it took years for me to figure out. And I kept filming Josh because he spent his money in the most extraordinary ways. Mm -hmm. Such an incredible, I mean, he I'm affected it, people's lives. Yeah. Right <laughs> Not at all. I mean, well. people were, you know, buying, people in his position were buying houses and cars, and he was building bunkers in Manhattan mm -hmm. that were shut down by FEMA. You know what I mean? It was just amazing, <laughs> affecting people's lives. So I was attracted to that. I'm an alligator. This is a perfect analogy of what the internet will be like. Inevitably, everyone will have a camera and a monitor, and it will be fast enough that we can do exactly what we're doing today in this prototype community. You know, every science fiction movie has a representation of video conferencing. But in reality, only a few people have actually ever done it. 
Have you ever done it? Right now we're at the cusp of really, we're, we're producing the telephone as entertainment. That's, that's a lot of what's going on mm -hmm. here. And right now, as we sit here today in 2000, early 2009, I think this might be the year where that element of the net blows up. And that's the real deal. That's the, the you know, the television the, the next of our wave. day. We say, you know, you, you lived in public. We, you know, we live in public. It was not easy to do this. Uh, you know, you, well, I you, went you, crazy. You, you, I went crazy. I'll tell you right now. I had a breakdown. So, so, <laughs> so why do you... Yeah. So, it's yeah. on the, in the film. Right. And, 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 and he knowing, took it too far. And knowing no, I took that... It all the way. He took it all, it all the way. He became the guinea pig when he rigged his own apartment. But knowing that, you know, it drove you crazy, why do you think that today people are searching out almost, you know, maybe a half step behind what you did? We're connecting people in space and time. You know, if you physically, your next door neighbor might not be the person you want to spend time with at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday. On the net, in real time, you can put those people together and they can have an experience together worldwide. It's really adding, adding video to chat. Remember when mm -hmm. chat blew up early? Now you can put, put those people together and you can create a video chat experience that is more compelling than anyone has ever experienced in the, in the history of humankind.